Hi, this is Joe from JH Leather, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make running loops. Let's get started. So all you'll need for this tutorial is a 3 8 strip of leather. So what we're going to do is split this down to about 1.5 millimeters thick. And to do this, we're going to use the splitting machines. So as you can see, the dial at the bottom here is what sets the distance to the knife. And you might need to do a few test bits first. So once you have got your splitting machine set to the distance that you want, you can then pull your strip of leather through. So once you've split your leather down, you then want to number one edge on the flesh side only. This is so that when the loop is made, it's going to be nice and crispy on the grain side. So once you've done edging, you can then stain your looping strip. And you want to polish this up with a staining cloth as well. And then you are going to crease both sides. So if you're going to go on and make fixed loop, this is all you will need to do to get to that point. But I'm now going to show you how to make a running loop. So for that, you need to square one of the ends of your looping, which this one is already quite square. And then we're going to wrap this around the strap that we want to make a loop for. So you want that inside edge or the inside sort of bit of looping just to sit inside your crease mark. And then fold your looping strip over and mark again just inside that crease mark on the end. Once you've done that, you can then cut this and then we're going to nick the corners. And then once you've done that, we want to wrap it around our strap again and then we're going to mark where the end of this sort of edge sits and mark with our nail and then this is what we're going to stitch mark to. So I'm stitch marking in number seven because the belt that I'm making this loop for was also stitched in number seven. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to stitch mark up and to that line. And we're gonna do that on both sides and on both edges. And it's just a bit awkward for me because I got the camera right in front of my face here, but it's just stitching along at that crease line. So once you've done that, we then want to skive the ends of our loop. So we're going to mark between the last two stitch marks here on both ends, and then we're going to skive this to half thickness. And once you've done that on both ends, you can nick off any fluffy bits and then restain both ends. And then we're going to pre all all of our stitch marks. So we're then going to stitch this. So we're going to use one needle on our thread here. So we're going to put that on like we would normally. And then we want to put a knot in the other end. So for this, 
uh, what you can do is you can put the like an inch or so of the tail underneath your needle and then wrap the long end around two or three times and you can pull the whole lot down over the needle and that's just a quick way of putting a knot in your thread and so this is where it gets a bit fiddly with the stitching um, it doesn't help I got the camera in front of my face so it does look a little bit more awkward than it actually is so what we're going to do is we're going to start by going through up through the first hole on one end of your loop and we're going to fold the loop over and go down through the last hole on that side and then with the needle you can then sort of open up the holes a bit and then we're going to go back up through the second hole so or the next hole over on the inside which will bring us out in our original hole on the top side And then we're going to make a back stitch and go back down through the last hole. We're going to miss out a hole on the inside and come up on the next hole. And then we're going to go back down through the hole in front. So I've left this at sort of real time speed so you can see what I'm doing because it is a bit awkward to explain it. So hopefully the video will do the explaining rather than me. But basically what we're going to do is do sort of a back is do back stitching so we're going to miss a hole on the inside and come out on sort of a hole along on the top and then go back down through the next hole so that it's creating sort of a running stitch or a back stitch So the final stitch will be done as normal and then on the back stitch we're going to go back up through the last hole there and then when we go down we're going to go down and come out between the two layers of the loop. And then you're going to pull your needle through and then we're going to push the needle back through between those two layers so you can't see where the crossover will be and then you can pull your needle through and then we're going to go up through the second to last hole here and then back down through the last hole and then up through the next hole along to our original hole and back down so this has created our back stitch and then we're going to mix miss the next one out and come up on the top one stitch mark along and then back down through the original hole and then we can back stitch or single hand stitch this side of our loop And then when we get to the end of that second side, we're going to do another back stitch. And then what we're going to do is we're going to push our needle in between and underneath sort of the stitches on that flesh side there. And 
and then we're going to pull the needle through so we can make a little loop Then what we're going to do is we're actually going to put our needle in through the loop and this is what we'll make our knot. So you can then put the whole needle and thread through your leather loop and pull this and this will just make the knot so it's more in towards the middle of the loop. Pull that nice and tight and then trim the end off with some scissors. And so that is your loop stitch. So the final thing we're going to need to do is to square the loop. So you want to just put a little bit of water on your loop, which will help it sort of stretch over the loop stick. And then put it through the appropriate sized loop stick. And so depending on how sort of thick your leather is, it will depend on how far up the loop stick you need it to go. So I'm using two full thicknesses of bridal leather here. And so you can just sort of put it up near against the loop stick just so you get an idea of where it should be. If you make it too small to start with, that's fine because you can then put it back on the loop stick and make it a bit bigger. But obviously if you make it way too big to start with, you can't get that back and you would need to make a new loop. So it is a bit of trial and error to start with. I'm quite used to making loops and a lot of my looping sticks do actually have marks where I need them to be. So once you're happy with that, you can then sort of run your bone along the edges just to polish them up. And then we're going to use our tack hammer just to hammer along our loop and this will make the edges nice and square. And then gonna recrease all our edges of our loop So as you see it's nice and square here which is why so if I tap the edges of my running loops to make them nice and square and then we can put this on to our strap and there you have your finished running loop so thank you very much for watching this video if you like the video please click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos and tutorials and I'll see you in the next video